is only this moment. And as you place your hand on your good heart, know that that breakthrough into that something special, that something wonderful that your heart has been desiring is already there in your heart. It's okay to not hope, know who you are right now because you're getting to know who you really are. It's just that you have to know that it's not this, what you thought it was. And so surrender. Oh, do with me what you want. Let my higher self take over, not my little self. I let my barriers drop. I let them down. And I surrender what I thought I was. And all I'm left with is now and here. And I am. And that is enough. this space, if there is something that's in my heart that I've carried into this service, I just place it on the altar of this moment. I don't have to know. I am just being. And I quiet my mind. And I just sit, listening. I thought I was and I'm getting to know who I really am thank you thank you God and so it is amen well good morning and it's so wonderful to share this service with Daniel, whom I haven't seen for 10 years and whom I got to know about 20 years ago, about the same time I got to know Cynthia Alice Anderson, who was on staff with me in a church in Kansas. And uh, that was an interesting experience. It really fits this chapter of the book that we're studying. You know, and Cynthia Alice said, oh, by the way, um, I'd like you to speak on a chapter in a book that I hadn't read. <laughs> so I looked at it, and I was so excited to see that it was all about the first word that Jesus said in his ministry, which was metanoia. That, that, that mistranslation, it's been mistranslated, convert, <laughs> repent. It doesn't mean any of those things. It means go beyond the mind that you know. Go beyond the self that you think you know. Go beyond what you know. He never once said go to church or make your family happy or be successful in your career. It's depart from what you think you know. And that time 20 years ago when I met Cynthia Alice, I was getting to know something very new and it was a powerful departure. Now right now in your life, you're at a transition point. Everyone in this room is in a transition point like that between what they think they know and what they're getting to know. And there, I was in a church that had been led for many years by a very uh, yin energy. People would come on Sundays and they would cry every Sunday and they would have Kleenex in every row. And I showed up with my area edition and my notes. I was the young energy, and it wasn't going over real good. 
And here it was, Easter time, and it was the biggest crowd I was, had ever spoken to. And I gave my talk, and I had my notes there. And I didn't, I mean, I wasn't lame enough that I was reading them or anything, but I had them there because I wanted to keep track of all of those ideas that I wanted to share with everyone. And the response was, I, the picture that was in my mind was like uh, Grant Wood's uh, American Gothic, those two people with the pitchfork staring at you. It was pretty much that. And so I, I knew it wasn't going over, and I went into my office between services, and I prayed a prayer. And you know, the thing about prayer is that it gets answered, and sometimes it get an- gets answered in ways we don't like. And uh, he, in this chapter, uh, Richard Rohr says, uh, you know, we, we, we pray for change, we pray for, for healing, we pray for what we want, but what comes, we fight against it because it isn't showing up in the form that we expected. So I prayed this prayer, I, give me what I need to do to reach these people because it ain't working. And uh, I went, shut my door, I went back, I was sitting in the front row. Actually, I was sitting up on the platform because they had like a throne. It took me five years to get rid of that thing. And I had to sit up there and I was panicked because I realized that I had l- locked my notes in my office, but I knew where the Heide key was. Somebody had taken the Heide key. So I, I knew where the assistant was. My assistant, she had gone home. But we had a, a, a facilities manager. He had a master key to everything. He'd gone to Home Depot for something, and there was no way to get my notes. It's five minutes till 11. And so... One of the ushers came up and said, you're in luck, because he'd heard about my plight. He said, this man in the second row over here, he's a locksmith. He always drives his locksmith truck to services, so he'll, he'll be able to get in there. But I was a little shocked when, he, when I saw him asking the guy, and he went. I found out what the guy, he never came back, by the way. And so there I was, and I got up, and I, I don't know, I made it through. And they gave me a standing ovation. And it was wonderful, and at brunch, I was with Jane Elizabeth Hart, who wrote Spiritual Power Tools, many of you know her, and she looked at me and she said, well, what'd you think? And I said, thank God I'll never have to do that again, and she said, oh no, you're going to do that every Sunday for the rest of your life. It's never gotten easier. You know, that, that, that uncomfortable space of I don't know, that place of possibility, that that womb, that chrysalis, that, that, that place out of which, that place of all potential out of which everything is created. Richard Rohr says that we come from the radiance of the Big Bang and we're moving into the allure of the Christ light, the Christ consciousness. It's the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. It's so powerful, but what's in the middle? <laughs> If you're a caterpillar and you're so tired and you're so weary and you're so just sick to death of eating leaves and crawling on the ground and you somehow work your way up and you, oh, you take a rest and then all of a sudden it gets dark and everything falls apart. That unfamiliar place is what I call undifferentiated goo because that's what happens to the caterpillar. All of its cells just decompose. But the interesting thing is is that there's no cell in the butterfly that wasn't in the caterpillar and, and, and it's the same cells. They're just a new relationship with itself. And what we're doing in our transformative experience, what we call Christ consciousness, but believe me, those words don't encompass it, is we're moving into undifferentiated goo we're having a new, in order to have, a new relationship with ourselves. And so if there's something that seems disruptive or not what you expected or not what you wanted in your life, realize that what you're doing is letting go of what you think you are in order to grow into what you're becoming. And you don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. I've retired. I retired a month and a half ago. When it happened in May, I was uh, in Tarpon Springs at Jane Elizabeth Hart's uh, retreat, uh, meditation group. And on my way out, I was going to head on back to, um, to, to my church in Delray Beach. And I, and I said to her, she challenged us about something. She said, you know, I could, re- I could retire and move up here tomorrow. Five days later, I retired and I, I, I moved up October 1st. 
I thought I was going to be a minister for 10 to 15 years. I came into this lifetime, I believe, with a soul plan, with a soul contract, a spiritual plan to be a father and to be a minister. And my kids grew up and I retired. And who the hell am I? When we go through times of transition, we have to let go of that part of us that thinks it knows but really doesn't because there's always that greater, that more, that something. How many people in this room, how many people in this room did puberty really well? Raise your hand. <laughs> when you go through any significant change in your life, you're incompetent at it. We have to let go of that false security, that false sense of who we are in order to allow what? To emerge the real self within us. I was just reading Eckhart Tolle yesterday and he, he was saying something about um, don't try to be good. Let the goodness, get in touch with the goodness within you and let it rise and express. But don't try to be good. I remember a minister many, many years ago who was sharing with his congregation. He, he told me, he was very proud. He says, you know, I told the congregation we got three words that are forbidden in this church. I always a little uncomfortable with ministers saying stuff like that, but three words, I don't know. And I said, why would you say that? He said, well, because there's a part of me that knows. It didn't work out too well for this guy. <laughs> what is the part of you that knows? It's that part of you that you can only access by way of I don't know. And if you want to have an experience of something more and other and different than and greater than what it is you're experiencing right now, you've got to go through the door of I don't know. Richard Rohr shares that Jesus said, um, I come to cast fire upon the earth and oh, how I wish it were already burning. What is the fire that he cast upon the earth? Change. And in the youth of unity, they have an affirmation that annoys adults. Kids like it. You want to do it? Change. I love it. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. Together? Change. I love it. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on. Look at the world around you. Look into your own heart. Look into your own world. You are, the, 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 the fire of change has been cast upon your heart upon the earth of your heart. And look around us, the fire of change is cast upon this world around us. And we don't like the way it looks, but you know, it's like puberty. I mean, if you raised kids, they all go through puberty and it's, it's messy. The world is messy. And it's designed that way. That doesn't mean there's not injustice or things that need to change or any number of things. But what doesn't work is decrying the fact of it, it just is, that's the natural order of things. When the caterpillar is ready to turn into a butterfly, it has to dissolve its known forms in order for something new and unexpected. I mean, how could this come out of that? It's impossible. And yet that's what happens. And in you, how can the person that you're about to become or that being that you already are inside because the caterpillar is no different than the butterfly. It's just a new configuration. It's just a new relationship. How can that come forth? How can you have a new relationship with yourself until and unless you're willing to let go of your familiarity, what you thought you were? And I, I, when I gave up and gave that talk that day, I just thought I was muddling through something so I can go back to my old room. You know, that's the one thing that I notice with change is that leave it to me. I'll just want to go back to my old room. It's true in churches. How many times in a church, even one as progressive as this one, you're going to think, well, you hear somebody say, can't we just do it like we used to do it? Can't it be like it was? No, you can't. And no, it isn't going to be the way it was. In the world that we have around us, it's the same thing. This world right now is really in tension between those who want to move ahead and those who say, no, I want to go back to what was. Except for it never was that anyway, but that's an illusion. And... The only security that exists is surrendering to the now moment. I've been working with some affirmations that we, I base the meditation on in my, uh, my quest to let go of the familiar and to move into this new something. I mean, if I'm not this role or that identity or this self-justification or whatever, who am I? 
And, and, and the affirmations go like this. It's okay for me to be uncomfortable and not know who I am right now because I'm becoming something new and finding out who I really am. But first, I've got to know it's not this. So I surrender. Do with me what you will. Let my higher self take over, not my little self. And I had an experience three weeks ago when I went on a weekend meditation retreat where, again, I prayed a prayer of surrender. And when you pray a prayer of surrender, you got to mean it. But if you mean it, you're going to get it. And my prayer was, show me what I most don't want to see. I hear some uh uh-ohs. And that was exactly what happened. I got confronted with aspects of my being that I had no idea. I mean, I thought, what I don't want to see might make me feel a little uncomfortable, but the whole idea that my mind, 100% of the time, was involved in making itself right and justifying itself. Without making myself right, the ego can't exist. And I got to see all these myriad ways that I was doing that. Well, that's wonderful. But that's the chrysalis. That's the letting go of the familiar. That's the saying, I am more than this. I'm not limited by my, my, my lower self, my little self, my false self, the, the, the lesser personality. And then what happens? The emergence of what's really real. Sometimes, if I don't know what's going on, I use that I don't know in order to open up a bigger space. So I'll ask a question, and then I go into a space of I don't know, and then I see what the first thing that emerges, a picture, a word, a phrase, a thought, maybe a feeling, and then I sit with that, and then I ask again, and I go into I don't know. The moving through the space of I don't know is the most transformative thing there is. The fire that has been cast upon the earth is change, and then it opens doors. Your heart opens doors, and then you walk through the doors with courage and fearlessness. Oh, maybe shaking and maybe facing some of the resistance that naturally arises, but let me tell you, it's the only way to live. It's the only reason why we're here. We're not here, you know, as as Richard Rohr says, there's no place in the Bible where Jesus said, uh, taught us how to be more successful in our careers. Or how to make our families happy. Uh, He was living proof of that. His family showed up in the book of Mark. It's the only place that talks about this, but it was the first of the four Gospels to be written, and it's probably the most accurate. And there is Mary and Jude and James, his brothers and mother, coming to him and trying to take him by force because they said he is out of his mind. That's literally what it says. I remember people coming up to me and saying, I don't remember reading that. Well, they wouldn't teach it to you in Sunday school, I'll tell you that. (laughs) Because there's no place where it says, this is how you keep your family happy, because he didn't. You say, well, how how could this be? I mean, that was St. Mary, St. Jude, St. James. That was later. They got the message later. And you and I, it should be no wonder in our lives when when we're living from our authentic self that not everybody is going to get it. Or affirm it, because last time I checked, my family wasn't St. Jude, St. James, and St. Mary. And so we've got to be willing to allow the authentic self to emerge and not try to see that it's going to be affirmed by society or politics or the person next door, but to know that it's okay not to know who we are right now. It's okay to awaken to the fact that we're emerging into the self that we truly are, but it's not what we think. It's not this. And surrender. And then say, uh, let it be done unto me as you will, as you want. And let my higher self take over, not my little self. So let's, let's move into a, a moment of, of, of meditation in which we surrender the concepts, the thoughts, the ideas that we thought we were, the limited self that has kept us chained and bound for so long, and even the idea that we thought was so good 
Many of us here think, oh, I'm not religious anymore, I'm spiritual. But how about letting go of what we thought was spiritual? Because there's always a more. There has to be a more. I surrender who I thought I was. I drop my barriers. I open my heart. And I'm willing to go into the space of I don't know. The most open space there is. The Christ of my being is casting fire upon the earth of my heart and saying, oh, how I wish it were already aflame. Well, it is. And that change is opening up doors in my heart right now, doors for deeper feeling, more kindness, a more open heart. But I have to walk through those doors. I have to open my heart and walk through the door. And I do so with courage. Fearlessness. A spirit of wonder and excitement and I'm moving into something good. I mean, I know what it is, but I know just as I sprung forth from the Big Bang in that radiance, I am being drawn into the light of the presence. Whatever I think it's called. And with gratitude in my heart, I say thank you. Thank you. And so it is. Amen.